What's up, Samurai? We are back in more Troll Dungeon and today we are going to be breaking down the final portion of the uh, uh, test server patch notes. So more specifically, ignoring the beautiful Shadow Tower, you can check that out in the other video. We're going to be talking about badge tracking and the additional updates. So this is probably going to end up being a shorter video and generally speaking, might even be quite lackluster. There's still some cool stuff to talk about, but most of all, I felt that the other two features, which was Fluxian and the uh, Catastro Castle thing or whatever, the new Shadow Tower 2.0, right? Um, I felt that those deserved their own highlighted area. Uh, so anyways, getting right into it, there is badge tracking now. So default key is gonna be I. I don't know what it's gonna be on console, but you'll notice that there is a badges tab right here. Uh, I'm assuming that these badges are the only ones showing for me because these are the main ones that I'm missing. Uh, I don't know if we can end up just opening up the badges section right here and I can just see quite literally all of the ones that I haven't collected. Like uh, it says badges close to completion and those you favorited. Oh, I see. So if I favorite this, now it shows up there. Okay, that's pretty cool, man. So basically, it's just badge tracking, and it'll end up showing, uh, I assume, the most, uh, the top badge, right? It doesn't seem like I can toggle it on or off, which kind of sucks. <laughs> kind of weird, like, uh, okay, why can't I just select these and tell them, okay, I don't want to watch this one, I want to see this one. Maybe it's something that's broken in the patch notes at the moment. So the three badges considered to be closest to completion will be displayed here. This is very subjective. If there are cases of one badge looks to be incorrectly displaying before another, please call those out. Uh, I guess just tell the devs about it. I don't know where they say to call that out. Uh, up to five favorited badges can be displayed on this list and badge tracking is shown on the HUD with the top badge being displayed below the currently tracked quest. Uh, can I like quick click and drag? How do I swap these around? Like they need to have an arrow that I can just shift and move them around. Uh, otherwise it is a cool feature. It's just, yeah, okay. So at the very least, the favorited badge seems to be at the top. So I guess that's a way you can track it. And I don't see why you would ever want to track more than uh, one badge at a time anyways. I'm always against having more clutter on the HUD, if I'm being honest, but I do think that this is a nice addition. Speaking of additions, there's the additional updates as well. So I'm gonna kind of read through these uh, myself and then I'll highlight the main things that I think you guys would be uh, you know, excited about seeing. More importantly though, there is a, uh, they fixed a memory leak that was found in some UI elements. So that's a good one because memory leaks are what crashes the game a lot. Players are now able to load into club PVP worlds with their friends across different regions. So for once it is no longer going to split European and North American servers, uh, at the very least on Xbox, PC, maybe Nintendo Switch. I don't know how Nintendo handles regions. I just know that PlayStation, European and North American servers are completely separate game files of Trove. So does this affect them? I don't know. Of course, this update's going to probably take a full year before it ends up coming to PC. That makes me question a few things though, because why would they be changing that so late in the game unless they're going to bring PvP back? I don't know. I really hope that they do. The thing is, I think that they need to rebalance how PvP works and just make it so that your level and your gear are irrelevant. When you go into PvP, they could even change the class abilities to be kind of more static and more specific and just make it a universal thing because I loved playing PvP with you guys, man. On our Hanamura map in Team Pixel and you know our CSGO map and everything, it was so much fun playing CTF and PvP and stuff. Ah, man. Okay, so the mysterious trophy case now has had more trophies added to it, including new unique ones. Uh, the springy roller ally no longer loot collects for chaos cores. Rip. Many previous event mounts, allies, boats, blah, 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 uh, have been moved from the event category into event vault category. So the event vault category 
uh, in particular is basically just for like super duper old items. Like this has been a category uh, that has been in the game for a very long time. Just now, I guess they've just added more things to it, which, okay, whatever. There's also an event vault stash in the store now, which is quite expensive. It's in the dragons tab. Unlocks a single random mount ally wings, blah, 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 in the event vault or Luxian category that you don't already have. So this would actually be helpful for me to farm for some of the mastery that I'm missing from previous event items and stuff that was honestly very, very expensive to get in game. But unfortunately you can see it's bordering on $10 uh, this is also American just to end up getting one of those, which is not worth it in my mind. Like, I, I don't know, man. I mean, if I if I didn't have bills to pay, sure. But 10 bucks just for one old mount that I'm never going to use just for the sake of mastery. Uh uh. Emblems that could previously occasionally be found in Luxian will now be found on the Weavers of Wonder merchant. Uh, this includes the repulsing emblem, blah, 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 blah. That, as far as I know, is the gold ship guys, right? Uh, I find it weird that they call them Weavers of Wonder instead of specifically telling us, like, what creature they're talking about. Because devs, I'm sorry, okay? Every time you guys read the, uh, write out these patch notes, nobody in the game knows what you call these things. Because, look at this. There, He doesn't have a name. He probably has a name like uh, Thanatos, the water dragon in the dev files, but no players can actually see that. So when they say Weavers of Wonders, my only clue is that it's got wonders in the title. Thankfully, we did find a boat. Weaver of Wonders. Okay, it does actually say his name, so I'm an idiot. <laughs> I had a feeling that's what his name was, dude. Dormant Wisdom Dragon Egg. Oh, interesting. Okay, I haven't seen this NPC in a long time. So the fact that he has unyielding and stuff is nice. Uh, the fact that he sells it all for dragon coins is not nice. That's actually really stupid. Devs, you need to change that because it's inconsistent and it should be Fragments of Wonder. I still personally think that Fragments of Wonder makes sense for these items to cost that. Um, it would be cheaper than Dragon Coins, technically, but you still have to spend hundreds of thousands of millions of flux in order to even get this amount of uh, Fragments of Wonder anyways, right? So I think it's only fair. Uh, some mounts, allies, and junk that were found under the events tab have been moved into the store section in the collections menu because they're available in packs. The Lava Scarred Bubble in the depths of the Angler now correctly reduces damage taken instead of increasing it. <laughs> <laughs> Fixed an issue where lures would result in more trophy fish than depth lures, so that's nice. Uh, some of the dungeons in the Geo Topside, Kandoria, Desert Frontier, Dragonfire Peaks, Jungle, uh, Jurassic Jungle Bound have been slightly adjusted to provide a better experience based on feedback. That's nice. So I don't know which dungeons they're talking about specifically because they're being very vague about it. Uh, but if I had to guess, I think, uh, is this one different? I don't know. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been in the general uh, Uber world, but I'm wondering if they changed the meatloaf. Oh, there's the meatloaf. Did they change it? Did they have a door on both sides or anything? No. I, I sincerely don't know what they changed. Anyways, um, they also changed it so that many Bomber Royale rubber bomb styles were corrected to display the default VFX when no replacement VFX were available. Many recipes for decorations from the tombs have been added to the Fey workbench and Haunted workbench respectively. Recipes for decorations from the Wolves Den have been added to the Shadowy Station. Pink Zo now, sell, now sells Pink Zo Pant. Pinkzo? Is that this guy? I thought it was Pinzo. Oh, okay. Ugh. Oh, dear Lord. Okay, he sells different things now. He used to sell this and this. Now he sells a Chuck Chucker. No one was harmed in the creation of this explosive. It's a bomb? Rubber bombs? Wait. Are these just bombs? Like, for the sake of being bombs? I mean, does it let me buy them? I don't know if it actually is. Oh yeah, no, it's grabbing them. Okay, let's try these out. I'm assuming that these are all just bombs and that's all there is to it, but okay, whatever, let's see. Oh, they're literally just bombs. Interesting, okay. Uh, that's very, very overpriced bombs. What about the rubber bombs? Do you think they actually bounce? Oh, they do. 
They have the wrong texture though. They're, are they his arm? I don't know what they are. Uh, and then that explodes instantly. They have nice V effects, but I just don't see why anyone would ever buy these for like 250K, you know? Lego block has the Lego dragon V effects. Yeah, I like that. Still, why would I ever, like, I wish that devs, I think it would be very, very nice if you had these, that would be cool. Have these as optional bomb skins that you can unlock, you know, just whatever, some way, shape or form for normal bombs. Like a lot of the stuff out of Bomber Royale, you'll unlock that ultimately makes it so that your bombs uh, change on certain dragons while you're out in the open world. But I would love it to have my normal bombs have a skin that I could end up selecting for the VFX. That would be really cool. Then they ended up changing the description on some uh, allies to say who it was correctly created by, the description of a couple other allies that say they increased the duration instead of doubled the duration, whatever. Um, pirate Captain wall trophies now correctly display Pirate Captain when placed. I don't think we have any of those in our PTS club world. No, we do not. Those are on the uh, live server. All right, um, that seems to be it for the update, at least for the badge tracking and additional changes. Very cool update. Um, is it the update we've been waiting for? No. Uh, I think that there are a lot of really nice mechanics to it. Generally speaking, as a update review is concerned, I think that it is an amazing update for sure. But I don't know whether or not it's gonna be the update that brings players back to the game, you know, because we've had a pretty bad year in terms of Trove content. Uh, usually we have like a really substantial update in March and then that kind of slowly peters out through the year getting less and less and less ex uh, exciting. And while I would say that this is the update that we've been waiting for, it's still not enough. So I'm still really hoping that they have another bigger update in the works that they just haven't talked about yet. I love the uh, Fluxian thing, although we can't really test it on the test server as you may have seen in my other video. Uh, more particularly, I love Castle Catastro. I want more of that. But to have this update take this long and only add like a couple things, like obviously the Fluxian merchant that must have required an insane amount of code and effort to get this guy to work the way that he does, more so than the Delves, uh, uh, than the Delves castle. Despite the fact that I think that's the highlight of this update, right? Like having Shadow Towers and Delves mixed together. Anyways, let me know what you guys all think about it. That's my two cents towards it. And pretty much is all of the videos that we have to cover on this update. Outside of, I may do some streams here and there. And obviously I'll still have like a full patch notes video when the update ends up going live, which I'm assuming is gonna be within the next two weeks, just because that's usually what they do. But the fact that we can't test this guy is concerning. I don't know if they're gonna end up fixing that by the time this video goes live, but currently he's uh, not working correctly. Anyways, thanks for watching. Smash like, sub for more. Buy the merch you want to support the channel. Sign or and stay epic, everybody.